Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Westside Baptist Church Bible Study Time. Today, of course, we're in the book of Daniel. We're in session eight. So go ahead and turn your books there, if you will. Before, we, though, we get into the lesson, we want to take time to pray for those that have needs in their lives. We want to pray for Harold Hampton. He's in the hospital uh, with pneumonia. Lift him up to the Lord. Joe Smith is in the Brookville Care Facility. She fell and, and uh, broke a portion of her back. It's serious. So they're going to have surgery before too long. Pray for Joe Smith. A friend of mine I met out on the trails around Brookville Lake, Scott Mason. Scott Mason fell and hurt his knee pretty bad, so lift him up to the Lord. I hope he's tuning in today, Scott. Uh, we care about you, buddy, and we're praying for you. Remember Nancy Scott and her family as they deal with COVID? As far as I know, she still don't have it, so that's a praise the Lord on that. Remember Jenny Clark and family? I think they have a second bout of it, so lift them up. Remember Kimber Sandlin? This is her big day, getting baptized. And others in the near future, we're excited about that. Pray for her that she grows up to be everything God wants her to be. Remember, uh, we praise for Angela and Abigail. They're both back today and doing better. And, but pray for Angela's stepdad and her mother. Lift them up to the Lord as well. Remember Zella Messer? She fell and uh, she injured herself to a point. So lift her up to the Lord that, that God would heal her body and give her a speedy recovery. Any other prayer needs today? Okay, they do. Oh. Golden years. It's everywhere. Remember Tashina, she was under the weather. We sure prayed hard for her and we'll continue to do so. Remember Marty, they have a big day coming up getting married. I'm excited about that. When is that? That's in the February. Come on in, y'all, where it's warm. All right, any other prayer needs today? Yeah, Mike. He does? Okay. Well, they can deal with that, can't they? Yeah. Any other prayer needs today? Neil Smith. Yeah, we prayed for Harold. He's right up top of the list. Had a good visit with him, but I think he's back in the hospital again. So yeah, lift him up to the Lord. And, and Jan, as she takes care of him. All right then, anyone else before we pray? Anyone else on your hearts today? Is he in Richmond or? Yeah. That's usually where he is. I know that's where he goes for his surgeries. I saw him at the Knowles uh, care facility in Oxford. So, yeah, be sure and lift him up to the Lord. I know that was a false reading. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Uh, a specialist doctor said he didn't have it. An infectious disease doctor said, no, you don't have COVID. So we'll take his word for it, amen. But he does have pneumonia. All right, anyone else before we pray? Well, let's take these to the Lord. And as we do, Brother Al Carpenter, would you lead us in prayer? You don't, you're, oh, I understand. Brother Merle, would you please lead us today? Father. 
Amen. All right, today, session 8, we're in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verses 8 through 21. The title of the session today, Integrity is Established. Integrity Established. Now, uh, we need to understand the background of what we're looking at today to fully appreciate uh, the way God worked in Daniel's life and his three friends. Uh, they did have integrity. They were taken away from their homes. Nebuchadnezzar came in through Babylon, and they were taken captive in a foreign country, foreign language, foreign customs, uh, filled with, with pagan idol worship. They're taken to a place like that, and God uses them in a great and a mighty way. How did they get their lives established so well and so young? They're just young men, young men. Uh, how did God get them prepared for something like that? We're going to look at that in depth before we even get into the lesson. And I think we can learn a lot here at Westside Baptist by understanding how God prepared them for this great change in their lives. And that we're going to find out that as they grew in the Lord, God kept blessing them. Their integrity grew and their, their, their ability to change lives grew. Uh, but here at Westside Baptist Church, we just praise God and give him glory. He's working with the children in this community. Praise God for that. God is working. We need to join him in that work. And with all these kids that are coming in, I know on Wednesday night, I get here early, 5, 530 and uh, kids are already waiting out here on the porch. Is it class time yet? Is it class time? And, and one week, of course, it was called off on account of COVID. Some of them were crying over it. They love class. They want to learn. They want to know about God. Now, West Side, we need to be concerned about that. We need to take care of these kids. Why should we do that? Uh, uh, well, first of all, because they're God's kids. They're God's. We need to take care of them and reach out to them with love. So God is working in that area. We need to join with him on that. Now, uh, God has blessed us uh, with a lot of good children's workers, youth workers. Praise God for that. And he's sending more of them. Some of them already trained. Only God can do that. He's building his church the way he wants it to be. And he's sending more and more workers to work with the kids and the youth. And the thing is, we have to prepare this generation because we're not going to be around forever. Amen? We'll be in heaven. Uh, who knows? It won't be, may not be long for some of us, but we'll be in heaven. But you know what we can do? We can prepare the kids according to Psalms 127, verse 4. You can shoot them like an arrow into the future. Imagine that. Blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. Our quiver's full and filling even more at Westside. Thank God for that. So how can we get them ready? Now these men, Daniel and his three friends, they were ready. They were prepared. And they stood up to the challenge and they kept their integrity in a foreign land. Who knows how this world's going to be next year, five years from now, ten years from now. Imagine how it's changed in your lifetime and my lifetime. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The, the changes that have taken place. Now, we're going to get these kids ready for something. Uh, we, we haven't seen it, but we know it's going to be challenging. It's already challenging, but even more so in the future. Then how do we get them ready? Well, first of all, uh, by making salvation so clear and so easy to understand that even a child can understand. It. God did that. God made salvation so clear and easy to understand, even children, maybe sometimes better than adults, they understand what salvation's all about. So we need to share the gospel with them, the love of God, ABCs, however you want to do it. We have to get the message of salvation out to them, that Jesus is the way to get to heaven. It doesn't stop there. When they get saved, we're going to baptize one this morning, but you know what? As, as a team, as a family, a church family, it's our job now to take Kimber under our wings and train her up to love her, train her, and get her ready for the future. So discipleship, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, of course Sunday school, uh, it has all the elements in it. Somebody said if you sang a hymn in Sunday school, you'd have all five purposes of the church taking place in Sunday school. I love it. I love Sunday school. Wednesday night, I love the program, mission studies. RAs, GAs, mission friends, act teens, it's still there. It still works. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
if you have something that's working better, thank God for that. I, I'm not being critical of you, but I, I love these good mission programs. Have our kids in these mission programs. Teach them about missionaries, uh, how that God has called them to be a missionary, whether it's overseas, in their community, wherever it may be. And then also you have to mentor them. Well, how do you mentor a young child? Anybody. How do you, who mentored you in your life? Somebody that came alongside and mentored you and helped you under... Now, that happened in Daniel's life and his three friends. They were mentored. How does that take place? Can that take place on a fishing bank? You know it can. Can it take place on a hayride? Anybody? Can it take place at a picnic? Well, it should take place in class or in church. I mean, kids, they're facing issues... You think you faced issues when you were growing up. Imagine the world they live in today. Not much different than Babylon in a lot of ways. All right? So, so how do you do that? Well, you take them under your wing. You encourage them. You lift up their head and, and just help them in that way. Any comments on that? So we're going to find in Daniel's life, first of all, that happened in Daniel's life by his parents. Now, we as a church, we have them three or four hopefully maybe five hours a week. Parents have them all the time. Are you with me? So it needs to take place at home. How did Daniel and his three friends stay so, so strong, maintain integrity during this time? Well, no doubt it was their parents that had brought them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They had understood from their parents. They saw it in their parents' lives. All right? Also, Daniel and, and his three friends, they came up under the prophets. The preaching of Jeremiah. They heard the preaching of God's word. And through that they had personal growth. Now that gets us ready for the lesson. That's the introduction. So in, in uh, session 8 we're looking at Daniel's life. Key doctrine is this. Religious liberty. Religious liberty. God alone is Lord of the conscience. And he has left it free from the doctrines and commandments of men. Which are contrary to his word are not contained in it. Wow, the Bible is pure from cover to cover. All right, you can count on every word of it. First thoughts today, people in ancient China wanted security from peoples to the north, so they built a great wall. The great wall is still there today. They say they can see it from outer space. It is so impressive to look at. Never been there, but I've certainly seen pictures and film of it. But the thing is, it wasn't effective. Why? because there were gates in it, and the gatekeepers were not, uh, they were not, uh, they didn't have integrity. They were not loyal to China. They just let the enemy come right in through the gates. They bribed them, and they were able to come through the gates. And here's the question. What commi uh, commitments are the most difficult to keep, anybody? Which ones are most difficult to keep? Well, probably... Uh, your commitment to the Lord, uh, I mean, in your salvation, that's probably not an issue. Or a commitment to your husband or wife, probably not. Those are the big commitments. You think maybe the little ones are the hardest? I, I gave it a lot of thought. That's what I came up with. <laughs> Things that may seem least important in your life. Do you have any issues with that? There you go. So many facets in that. Commitments to your family, to the church, to the Lord, to the community. And now which ones do you might, uh, that in your own personal life that you might have a challenge with? Which ones? You're all just perfect then? Am I the only one here not perfect? <laughs> I have a challenge on the smaller ones. So I'll just be honest. With you. Seems uh, Things that seem non-consequential in your life. Any, uh, any comments on that? All right, we'll get right into the scriptures then. A commitment expressed, Daniel 1, 8 through 10. Who'd like to read that? Wow. So what's going on here, uh, 
Babylon is trying to conform Daniel and his friends into eating the king's food. Now the king's food was probably the best food in the kingdom, right? Probably the best that you could ever imagine, but you know what? It went against their dietary laws. It was not kosher. They were not, going to, uh, they were not supposed to eat those sorts of things. But notice here, first of all, Daniel was totally given to the Lord. Uh, Daniel determined this thing out. He thought about it. Careful thought uh, was given to that decision that he made. And because he was brought up by his parents, under, of course, under the preaching of Jeremiah and, and uh, the influence that all that had on him, uh, he had determined in his heart he wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to do that. But he got permission. Notice here he didn't make a picket sign. He didn't throw rocks at, at anybody. Uh, he, he didn't do any of that. He, no threats. But he faced this problem, uh, problem with humility and honesty. He was just honest and humble about it. He wanted permission. So he spoke to the chief eunuch. And no doubt the eunuch could see a, a difference in Daniel and his friends. And notice here that God had granted kindness and compassion from the chief eunuch. So God, again, is always in everything. Sometimes it seems like he's far away, but he's not. You may go through an issue in your life, a hard time, a trial. Well, where's God? And the devil whispers in your ear, if God really loved you, you wouldn't be going through this. Uh, how can he care for you and, and you going through that? In your, but you know what? God does love you. He does care for you. And in the midst of the harshest cir circumstances, he's molding you and shaping you into what he wants you to be. That's, what he, that's the way he works in our lives. And notice here he's working on the heart of the chief eunuch. And he saw something different about Daniel, no doubt. He's a man of integrity. Yeah, but the, the, the chief eunuch here, uh, the leader that was looking over these young men, he said, now if the king looks at you and you've lost weight and you look poor, uh, he may have my head. And the, and the king could do it. Nebuchadnezzar had absolute power in the kingdom. All right? So they didn't want to eat that food. Okay, they had certain things they wanted to eat. Any comments on that? Now, the world we're living in today, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 1 and 2, uh, tries to conform us into its image. And it's, it's pressure put on us every day. The world wants us to be like the world. But the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed how? By the renewing of the mind. It's a daily thing in your life. Imagine a gelatin mold. You ever made gelatin in a mold before any of you? That was one of the highlights of my childhood, getting to help mom in the kitchen. We're going to make jello today. Oh, yeah. So she get out the mold, and she had molds, I remember, uh, like, like grapes, a cluster of grapes. We'd, we'd pour that jello in the mold, put it in the fridge, and it couldn't get cold fast enough for me. You know, but we made, and that's what the world wants to do with us, pour us into their mold, and that way we won't be different. We won't be different. Uh, but notice Daniel would not allow the world to put him in, in, in its mold. Now, second of all, then, a test that's passed. Verses 11 through 13. Who'd like to read that for us today? 11 through 13. So we're talking about vegetables. The word for vegetable here probably includes uh, fruits and vegetables and grains and, and maybe nuts, things like that. That's kind of like a Mediterranean diet, I think, if you added some olive oil to it. But, but notice here, uh, th this would be safe for them to eat without worrying about uh, desecrating their bodies with meat that perhaps was uh, sacrificed to idols or or maybe it was a type of meat that God forbid them to eat. I mean, the dietary laws of the Jewish people, we'll study that another time, but they were not allowed to eat certain things, and part of it was for safety reasons, and, and part of it is because God said so, and he's God and we're not. But notice here, uh, Daniel, I believe, led by God, says, well, let's have a contest then. 
Let's have a godly contest. Let's have this test. You let the other young men eat the king's food, which is no doubt wonderful, gourmet food. And we're going to eat our fruits and veggies. And then 10 days later, we'll see who looks better. Now, do you think 10 days makes that big of a difference? Not really. So no doubt God was adding his blessing to this. And, and Daniel was counting on that. Counting on that. But notice these seem like very little things to us. What are some little things in our lives that we made commitments with that, that sometimes we may just want to bypass it a little bit? Can anybody talk about it? The big commitments, ah, that's no problem. I'm going to keep that. But maybe some little things in your life. That's personal. That's between you and God. But notice how God is, is testing uh, Daniel and his friends. And at the same time, he's developing these men. He's developing them through the little things. The little things are important, too. And it amazes me that people watch us all the time, especially little kids. They watch us all the time. I remember having a preacher come in and do revival one time, a wonderful, wonderful preacher. I have nothing in the world against the man. I love him. He's in heaven now. But I noticed we were driving around on visitation, and he had, anybody know what a fuzz buster is? He had a fuzz buster on his dash. And I looked at it three or four times, and I thought, wow. It, it, personally, it didn't sit well with me. It's kind of like, well, the, God's law is out there, the law of the land I should obey. However, uh, I don't want to get a ticket. You know, I'm going to be speeding. or what? How does that set with you all? That seems like a very minor thing, you know. Can I get an argument started today or what? I'm trying. <laughs> trying my best. Well, what's your view on things like that? And if you have one, I'm not being critical of you. That's between you and God. But it, 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 it hit me, it struck me kind of funny, that the wonderful man of God. But you see, the little things, it's so easy to overlook certain things like that. Any comment? Okay. That, you know, we get deep in thought or, or we get thinking about other things. We get distracted. And perhaps that is a reminder to them to stay within what they need to be doing. Yeah. It's not necessarily like I'm going to go over until I see, hear somebody. But it may be that, okay, that's going to remind me that they're there. Okay. I will back off when I hear so that could be a positive reinforcement for you then. Slow rolling stop signs. Yeah. We're probably all, huh? <laughs> and what about an, a light that's orange? Are you with me? <laughs> and you know, it, it, it seems like sometimes you try to obey the law, and the guy behind you thought you should have gone through that yellow light or orange light, and he honks his horn and he's mad at you. It's a, it's a challenge, all right? But I do believe God uses the little things, and people watch all the time, and especially little kids. Man, they don't miss a thing. <laughs> they don't miss anything. So we need to be careful in the little things to be obedient to God. Daniel was and his three friends. Uh, they, they were careful to do this, and, and God developed them. Uh, I mean, to serve him in even a greater way because of it. Now, 14 through 16 says, he agreed with them about this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, they looked better and healthier than all the young men who were eating the king's food. So no, no doubt God put his blessing on this. So the, the, the guard continued to remove their food and the wine uh, they were to drink and give them vegetables. So they brought on more vegetables. Now, I'm gonna un I highlighted this. I think it's so good. God provides small and large opportunities to give our integrity before others. Okay? When others see us trust God's word, God can use that to draw them to Christ. Have you ever thought about that? Think about that for a minute. God, when others see us trust God's word, God can use that to draw them to Christ. In the hospital setting, I, I mean, when, when the... Trials come, 
and, and maybe you got a bad word from the doctor or whatever, things you may not have wanted to hear, and, and you perhaps pray in front of others or, or, or let them know, I, I realize this is a serious matter, however, I do trust in my Lord. And they see you doing and seeing things like going through a tough time in life. Uh, uh, I mean, there's so many ways we can suffer, but uh, I, I've said it before, and I believe it's true. You know, get your input on it. When we go through a time of suffering or loss or hardship, it's kind of like God has put us on a pedestal to praise Him. Uh, because people are watching us. And it's not that we try to do or say things just to impress other people. It needs to come from the heart. Integrity needs to be maintained. However, if we have that built into our lives and we're going through it, an issue uh, like that and we praise the Lord and it's coming from our heart, people can tell. It says when others see us trust God's word, God can use that to draw them to Christ. Amen. Any comments on that? Any circumstances in your life you can talk about in which you've seen that happen? Anything at all? Any circumstances in your life, perhaps of suffering or heartache or trial or loss, in which God uh, enabled you to praise Him and glorify Him, perhaps influenced other people? Can you talk about anything like that? No doubt it's happened in your life. Okay, then. Let's move on. A recognized difference. A recognized difference. Verse 17. Who'd like to read verse 17 for me? Thank you for that. So because of their faithfulness and their integrity, these four young men were granted knowledge and understanding. Now knowledge, according to the book here, knowledge describes the uh, depth of learning the young men were able to master. Understanding speaks about intelligence and skill. It says archaeologists have discovered many examples of ancient Babylonian literature. So they were advanced in many ways when it came to literature and even science. Astronomy is covered here. Some of the, the ideas of creation, uh, creation and uh, astronomy they had. So uh, they learned a great deal there that went along with what they already knew about God. Does that make sense? And it says Daniel also understood visions and dreams of every kind. I have a couple of dreams I wish he could interpret for me. And Karen may have a couple as well. That what in the world are you trying to tell me here, Lord? Or, or what's this all about? Uh, and you may have some as well. But, but Daniel was able to do that. Dreams of every kind. Wow. Verses 18 through 21. At the end of the time that the kings had said to present them, the chief eunuch presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king interviewed them, and among all of them, no one was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they began to attend the king. In every matter of wisdom and understanding the king consulted them about, he found them, listen, ten times better than all the magicians and mediums in his entire kingdom, and Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. One thing about Nebuchadnezzar, good leader in this aspect of it, he surrounded himself with smart people, <laughs> and that's good. No matter what position of leadership you have, do that. They may challenge you a bit, but that's good too. Surround yourself with people that are smart, and it'll make your leadership that much better. You let God use it in your leadership. But the king interviewed them and found out they were ten times better than, than, than the, the pagans. I call them the pagans here. Magicians and, and all these uh, other leaders, mediums. Okay, and what they would do, they would consult the false gods. They had all these false gods, and, and they would consult them. I don't know if they used crystal balls or, uh, or whether they used uh, tea leaves or tarot cards, whatever. I don't know what they used in this day. No doubt they had their paraphernalia that they would use to do this. But the thing is, they were uh, speaking to false gods. 
were not even real. And we're going to find out a little bit later that, that the king goes to Daniel to interpret some visions and, and dreams and things. But Daniel, very special man. He remained in the court until the first year of the next king. Any, any comments on that? So the contest is won because God put his blessing all over it. God blessed them uh, in ways uh, in their lives that, that even the uh, ungodly king would have to marvel and praise their God. That should be a goal for each of us, that God, that God could use us in a way, through our lifestyle, through our witness, through what we say, that it would bring, bring glory to himself. Does that make sense? God to use us in a way to glorify himself. Now, question. How have you or members of your Bible study group or small group seen God's work grow in their lives as they have walked with him? Are you a growing Christian as you serve the Lord? And how can you tell? Easy for preachers. We go back through our old sermon notes. I still have my first note from my first sermon in 1981. I still have that, and I think, my goodness. That's about like a, a preschooler almost, you know, so simple. But you see, you can you grow. Maybe you keep a journal, a diary, whatever. Have you seen growth in your lives? Uh, maybe verses in the Bible, some of it used to be very foggy about it. You didn't understand it. Now it makes sense to you. Yeah, are you seeing it in your service? Are you doing more, or, or I'll say it this way, are, are you more effective in your service now than you were earlier? And some may say, well, preacher, I'm older now. I don't have the energy I used to have. But you know what? You have wisdom. You have knowledge. And you can be even more effective in your prayer life as you get older. Amen? You certainly can. So that's the thing. Any comments at all on the lesson then? Be faithful in the little things. Maintain integrity in the little things and just see how God blesses your life in the bigger things. Now maybe you've heard this lesson today and you would like to become a Christian. You realize today if you were to die you would not go to heaven. It wasn't this preacher that revealed that to you but the Spirit of God. I want to lead you in a simple sinner's prayer. If you want to become a Christian, just simply bow with me at this time, repeat what I say, uh, and you, you need to have sincerity with it. Saying words won't save you, but it needs to come from your heart. So bow with me. Dear God, forgive me for my sins. I realize that I've sinned and I've broken your law and I've broken your heart. And I'm sorry about that, Lord. And right now, Lord, I'm ready to turn from my sin and turn to Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sin, that he was buried, and on the third day he arose. And right now, God, I pray with everything inside me that you'd forgive me for my sin, come into my heart, into my life, and save me. Be my Lord and my Master. Come in, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer this morning, give me a call, text me, email me, 513-265-5051. You may have some questions about salvation that I can help you with. I love to. You may need some materials to help you grow up in the Lord. We just recently sent out a few books. <laughs> but we'll send you some good LifeWay materials that will help you grow up and be discipled the way God wants you to serve. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and close it. We're going to have prayer. Uh, of course, we have all these prayer needs. Can you think of any others before we close in prayer? Pray for the service coming up, if you will. I'll be preaching out of Acts chapter 8, as well as, notice in your bulletin, I always put it there for you, Acts chapter 8 and Romans chapter 6, about baptism. You want to know about baptism? Well, I'm not going to give you the Baptist point of view on it. I'm going to give you what the Bible says about it. <laughs> uh, baptism's important, so, so please have your Bibles ready for that. Do we have any other prayer needs before we close? All right, then, Brother Steve, would you close us in prayer? <laughs>